Paul, before we went to break, you were talking about your band, Must yes. Twangs. The Must Twangs. Yeah. <laughs> I like that Midwest name. Midwest surf band. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. Now, yeah. what happened with the Must Twangs? Well, we all kind of went our separate ways. But, uh, oh, an interesting thing, the guitar player in the Must Twangs is the guy who really taught me guitar. Mm -hmm. And uh, I went on to become uh, also uh, taught by uh, another fellow who gave up his position to me in the band. Okay. And he ended up winning in 1979, the same year I had a platinum record. He mm -hmm. got the Pulitzer Prize in Music. Really? Yeah. Isn't that something? In the something? world. Yeah. Wow. He's in the Almanac every year. Mm -hmm. Joseph, Joseph Schwantner. So someone <laughs> who taught you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Living in his grandmother's basement. He could play all the technical uh, things on guitar that, mm -hmm. you know, I ended up picking up a little bit of that. but. Amazing. The same year. Wow. We had the same success. So. That's something. Now, yeah. okay, so anyway, the Mustwangs. Yeah, went on to become the Gentries, and different guys started getting coming in and leaving and whatnot. Mm -hmm. And then we became the Robin kind. Mm -hmm. This is all in the Chicago area where the house band at the Whiskey A Go Go there, which mm -hmm. is where we got discovered by James William Gershio, who was playing bass on tour with the Buckinghams, which mm -hmm. had huge hits. Uh, back in the, in the 60s in Chicago, nationally, mm -hmm. on Columbia Records, and Jim was playing bass guitar with Chad and Jeremy. Mm -hmm. And he stopped in the whiskey and he caught our act, and we were a cover band then. We were doing mm -hmm. everything that was you know, popular on the radio. I don't think we had any original tunes at the time. But he loved, uh, Cal and I, my partner in the band, the other guitar player, were doing Righteous Brothers uh, mm -hmm. music, and uh, I was singing the high parts and he was singing the lower things and got, he was taken by that and he, he, he saw a band there that could do something. Yeah, mm -hmm. do something. So he flew us to LA, mm -hmm. said, check out my, I have an office here, I have management, I have business management, everything under one roof, album designers, mm -hmm. and uh, you can get your deal on Columbia Records. Oh. And he was uh, he had already discovered the band Chicago, mm -hmm. so we were kind of following in their tracks and uh, released two albums on Columbia, and we spent a lot of, a couple of years touring, opening for Chicago, okay. and uh, some big venues, a lot of football stadiums. And, and, uh, Wasn't that neat at the time, too, because you were still young. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah, <laughs> early 20s, and just, just uh, Finding my groove, mm -hmm, <laughs> mm -hmm. and I was writing a lot of songs for the Speed Press at the time. And the first one was a single. It was actually went top ten in Phoenix, Arizona, on both radio stations there, okay. Crux and Chris, I remember. And uh, we ended up uh, going into Phoenix on New Year's Eve, and we played with Blood, Sweat, and Tears, The Doors, Chicago, and Illinois Speed Press. Wow! On one show. Wow! Those are the good old days. Did you have a lot of nerves then? You, when you were up on stage, weren't you nervous with no, all these things? No, no, not too, not too bad. No, we're, we're, uh, we've been in front of a lot of people before mm -hmm. we play that show. So, mm -hmm. but yeah, I do get butterflies the size of elephants sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm sure it's gotten yeah. better though over the yeah, years. Correct. Yeah, a little bit. <laughs> yeah, I'm still. Still, still a little bit nervous there. Now, wasn't there a competition <laughs> that you guys won? There was, yeah, with the uh, band The Roving Kind. This is before the Speed Press, mm -hmm. uh, back in Chicago. And we were invited to join this Battle of the Bandstand. There were 80 bands competing, mm -hmm. 80. And uh, I brought a song, original, the first song I ever wrote called Right on Time. And then we did an outside song our manager had brought us at the time and one that I also sang, and uh, we won. And this is in front of Dick Clark, all by himself in the middle of this auditorium, just judging. Wow. And uh, God bless him, he uh, flew us to California. We were on his show out there called Where the Action Is, and mm -hmm. got to do the song, lip synced it on, wow. on TV back <laughs> there. And I think we ended up staying about six weeks. <laughs> okay, fell in love with a little tour, California yeah. a little and bit. And then eventually we moved there in 67. Mm -hmm. and, uh, now, would you say that this was kind of the peak of your musical career, Paul? Before or? Poco, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah that before been, Poco. Yes. Mm -hmm. But let, let's talk about Poco then. Now, mm -hmm. how did, so Illinois Speed Press, how did that get you into Poco? Ah, well, 
in Chicago, in the band Chicago, is Peter Cetera. He was singing a lot of their hits at the time. They had three singers, but Peter is, he's the one that went off on his own, eventually uh, leaving the band. But uh, he was taking steel guitar lessons from the steel guitar player, Rusty Young, in Poco. Okay. And Peter uh, had mentioned that the speed press was kind of dissolving and, mm -hmm. and Jim Messina in Poco. Uh, was also looking to move on, and he ended up with Kenny Loggins. So it was Loggins and Messina. I replaced Jimmy okay. in Poco, mm -hmm. and uh, it's been that way ever since. They took me on tour with them, Poco mm -hmm. did. Mm -hmm. uh, and just I roomed with Jimmy on the tour, and he showed me all the guitar licks and what mm -hmm. I had to learn. And oh. one day at the Fillmore West in California, he said, Take over. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> and, and so you did. And Neil Young's <laughs> in the audience. And wow. Good thing I didn't know that till afterwards. But <laughs> yeah, uh, and been there ever since. Now, how many years ago. were you with Poco? I joined in 1970 and I left three years ago. Okay. Yeah, like this month. Yeah. And what was it like being on the road all Ooh, those years, Paul? Nine months of the year we were on the road, mm -hmm. and three months in the studio, pretty much. Mm -hmm. Was it difficult for you to always be on the road? Yeah, it was hard to be away from the families and, you know, kind of raise your kids and, and uh, keep all that together. And, uh, yeah, it was hard for all of us. Mm -hmm. and we went through a lot of changes, but, boy, the fans, would <laughs> they wouldn't have it any other way. They loved you. Yeah, we we're, were a major con concert draw. We weren't selling a whole lot of records, you know, a quarter million maybe, uh, mm -hmm. every album. but. Uh, it took about 10 years before we went platinum. Mm -hmm. So a lot of touring, a lot of school gymnasiums, from mm -hmm. a lot of colleges, Maine to Miami, mm -hmm. Seattle to Miami. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and then it just got bigger and yeah. bigger from yeah. there. Yeah, giant stadium, 90,000 people. Wow. Uh, Carnegie Hall a couple times, uh, Shea Stadium, Central Park, New York, that was a great one. Oh, That's okay. 10,000 people every year. Well, great. Well, we're going to take a quick, okay. quick break yeah. right now, but right. we're going to show some of your music when okay. we get back from these messages. Wonderful. So stay tuned. Okay.